Hey everybody, Dr. King here with All Star Veterinary Clinic and another special episode of Dr. King Says. Today's episode, I've got Allie Cook with me here, one of our registered veterinary technicians at the clinic. She is going through the Karen Pryor Behavior School to learn about behavior training. And we're at one of my favorite stores today, Pet People. Why are we at Pet People? Because they're sponsoring this episode of Dr. King Says. And in today's episode, we are going to be learning about some of the things that are great to have on hand prior to bringing your puppy home. Stay tuned because at the end of the episode, we're gonna be raffling off a great gift basket. All right, let's head into the store everybody and see what we can find. So there's quite a few things that are great to have at home prior to bringing your puppy home. But today we're gonna to cover a couple of different topics. One being toys, crates and play pens, food dispensing devices, and leashes and collars. So let's head over to toys first. All right, everybody, so we're in the toy aisle and I've got Trisha, who's the area manager for Pet People. And Trisha, I'd like you to share a little bit about the store. Uh, you know, when I come into the store, I feel like it's a very special store. My husband feels the same way. We enjoy coming in. Um, so there are lots of things that I value behind the store, but if you could share a little bit about the store's philosophy and why it's so great for our clients. Sure, yeah. Pet People is a family owned business based out of Ohio and we've been in business for over 20 years and we just want to be your local neighborhood store where you feel welcome and you can bring your pets. Um, we like to spoil both people and their pets. Um, so our main philosophy is just great customer service and helping clients find what they need. Okay, terrific. So here in the toy aisle, I know you've got some favorites, you know, that you've worked with some customers on or oh, yeah. that you guys recommend and Allie, you do as well with the Karen Pryor training. So Allie, why don't you go first and tell us um, maybe one or two of your favorite toys that you think would be great for a puppy. First, I would definitely recommend Kong. They're durable, they last. Um, you can do many things and keep your dog busy for a decent amount of time with these. You can freeze different ingredients in them as far as like soft food or bananas and healthy things to go in them. And then it just keeps them busy, their minds occupied, and they're not chewing up your couch or socks. So I think the company Kong actually has a website that has recipes on it, yep. which is kind of clever, um, which I always find very interesting. Um, the Kong itself has a hole in the in the bottom of the device as well as at the top, so you can stuff things in. Yep. Um, and then like Ali said, you can freeze them. They do come in a variety of sizes, and then they they do have a version that is like for extreme chewers. So we all know those dogs who just like to destroy toys. So. Um, the Kong, you know, has a couple of different versions, a couple of different sizes. So it's, I definitely, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of my favorite toys and, and time occupiers. Trisha, what about you? What's one of your favorites that you I think would be advantageous for absolutely a puppy? love, and this is one of our best sellers, the Orby Snoops. Um, you can pull the center out and put a high value treat in it, like a jerky, um, and then push this back down. And the dog has to work really hard to get the treats out. But also what's great about Orby toys is they don't chew up easily. And so they satiate a dog's chew urge. So they can chew and chew on this entire out their jaws without the toy tearing up easily. So those are some good suggestions. I also see behind you the Benny Bones. Yes. Um, those are also good for chewing. Yes, right? they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. They're um, similar to a Nyla bone, but the difference is this is a bacon flavored one. So you'll see there's, if you look up close, there's little pieces of bacon in the um, nylon itself. So as they chew, uh, they get little bursts of flavor. So it encourages the dog to stay interested in it. All right, well, let's head over to um, food dispensing devices and we'll see what we can find there. All right, so we're on to food dispensing devices. So we've got a couple of different examples here. Um, Allie, why don't you go first? So this is a treat tumble. This is a beginner level of what Dr. King is going to talk about. You put food and treats in there, it keeps the pet busy um, and while you're able to do other things. And How long do you think on average a puppy, that might take a puppy to go through the food? Just depending on the puppy and how interested they are, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. You put their whole meal in there, do you think? You could, yeah. Or you could use it for treats? Yeah. Okay, so this, you just put the food directly in, it's not gonna regulate I mean, as soon as they roll it, the food's falling right. out, correct? Yes. Okay, so in this is Bob-a-lot. This is like the next step up. Um, in this food dispenser, you actually take the lid off um, and you can, you dump the kibble in the top and then there's a window at the side. Um, it reminds me of Weeble Wobbles for yes. all of us older people. Um, and you adjust the window and then 
depending on the size of the window, you know, that helps with the size of the kibble, but then also um, regulates how fast the food will fall out. So this is a really, I love this one. It's very durable. Um, they can knock it around um, and just really go to town on it. Um, and so, and this comes in a variety of sizes as well. So I think this is the middle size. There's one bigger and there's one littler, um, you know, with this food dispenser. So Trisha, what do you have there? I have a couple of different Outward Hound slow feeders. These are great for occupying a puppy's mind or if you have one that tries to gobble his food really quickly and then sometimes they'll get an upset tummy. Um, so you can put their kibble in this, but a great way to use them too is to add a little water so that the kibble floats around um, and makes it a little bit more challenging. Or if you know you're gonna have bad weather and your dog's not gonna get a walk the next day, I like to put in a little bone broth or something like um, goat's chicken milk. Broth or, yeah, chicken yeah, broth okay. with the kibble and freeze it overnight. And then you give them their breakfast or their dinner um, and make them work for it. And that helps bring that energy down when they aren't gonna get outside and get some exercise. So this type of toy, do you think this could be chewed up by a dog? It can if okay. you leave it out. They are pretty um, strong and durable, but if you left it out and they used it as a toy, yeah, they can they chew, can it, chew up. it up. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so these are some great examples of time occupiers and food dispensing devices. And we're gonna move on to our next area, leashes and collars. So everybody, when you bring home your puppy, you wanna dress them up, you want them to be cute, you want them to be really manly. So these items are great for that. You can get some bow ties, you can get some collars that have different prints on them. But when it comes to training, you really wanna use special devices that are designed to help your dog behave and learn better for you. So those devices, we've got a gentle leader here, and a three-in-one harness. And Allie, why don't you explain kind of how we use a gentle leader? Okay, so a gentle leader is good for the bigger dogs that tend to pull. It directs their nose back in towards you. So when they go out to pull, they're instantly gonna turn their nose back to you. So then they're not gonna want the urge to continue pulling. Right, because they don't want to turn around, right? They want to go right. forward. So if it's redirecting them and turning them, then they can't go forward, Right. which is, that's not good for them, right? right? So they always want to do what's good for them. So going forward is good. So they stop pulling. Right. right. What is a thing that a lot of people say? Oh, it's a muzzle. Yes. Right. Isn't that the most one of the most yes, common? Yes. A lot of people mistaken this for a muzzle because it goes around their muzzle, but it's for the purpose of making them turn their nose back to you. They can pant. Yes. You they can, can pant. Treats. I mean, on the picture, there's a little dog with a tennis ball in his mouth. I mean, he's having a great time, and you're gonna have a great time if your dog's listening to you. Exactly. So that's one device. Um, we also recommend, as you can see in the picture there, the dog's on a flat lead. So we really want to use flat leads when we're talking about training until your dog behaves. And then you can use some of these other fancier leash devices. But um, Trisha, tell them about what you've got in your hands here. Another great option is um, the three-in-one harness. This has the front attachment on it. It's very similar to the general leader in that it will redirect the dog. If it tries to get out ahead of you or turn, it will turn the dog back um, so you can get it back in a heel position. The nice thing about this harness is you can hook it on the back once your dog learns to behave and it comes with a car safety restraint. So um, it helps you to um, strap your dog into the seat so that it can't jump all around in your car. Oh, that's so, so important. So with puppies, yeah. it's really nice to help control them in the vehicle as well. Absolutely, because they're projectiles. Mm -hmm. When they're in the vehicle, they're a projectile. So right. we definitely want them restrained in the vehicle. Um, one thing I will say about these devices is that they should be fitted, right? Mm -hmm. So the pet should be fitted. So here yep. at Pet People, you guys probably fit the that's pets for them. Absolutely. So you want to bring your dog in, mm -hmm. and then they can fit you with the right size harness or gentle leader mm -hmm. um, that would work for your dog. Yep. All right, so we'll go move on to the next area. So we're on to the next area, crates and play pens. So keeping your pet confined keeps them from failing. So I think all three of us are probably big proponents of crate training and keeping pets in play pens um, and restricting their space when they first get home. Because I have a tendency to find that when they're allowed too much space, then they're failing. The more they fail, the harder it is to train them and you're untraining, which I'm never a fan of. So, um, Allie, you know, when we talk about using a crate um, and crate training, we talk about using certain kinds of treats. You know, we had talked about the Kong. Um, talk about a little bit about maybe um, the type of treats that you recommend um, when we're doing training sessions or when we're do working on crate training or when we're putting a pet in a crate. You know, what kind of treats are good for people to be using? Okay, um, so I have here Zooks. They're good size. You want to use little portions so you're not filling your puppy up so that way you can continue training throughout the day. You always want to make the crate a positive experience, so giving them treats, using the Kong as a tool. You can even feed them their dinner. You just want them to feel like that is a safe place and somewhere they can go. Um, it's not something that should be used as punishment. Of course, if you need a break, 
definitely put them down for a nap or whatever. <laughs> um, but you always want to make it a positive place so that you can use that as a tool in the future for if you need to leave and you don't. Or you have people come over and don't yeah. like dogs or yeah, I mean absolutely. the the crate is just a great tool to have just in general. I feel like yeah. you know even as an adult dog, they might be able to be out in the house now. But if they're used to crate training. You know, um, I think that it's just a wonderful tool to be able to use and pull out and use. Um, so, you guys here at Pet People have mm -hmm. quite a few, um, you know, brochures and different types of information for mm -hmm. people to help them. Trisha, why don't you talk about what you've got in your hands there? Um, well, to go along with what you guys were showing, I just have um, crate training for dogs and housebreaking your new puppy. We have a lot of informational brochures. These top ones um, are really to help people build confidence when they do get a new puppy. Um, these were written by a veterinarian in Ohio, um, but uh, it's just about getting a puppy and then just tips on things like this. So um, I'm sure that you will give people tips on how to housebreak, but this kind of helps reiterate it if you read it. Um, or if we talk to them here and then they take it home, their husband or wife or children can read it and it helps give everyone tips. Right, because I think inconsistency is one of the biggest things, yes. one of the biggest factors we yes. um, we face when we're talking to clients about training and variable reinforcement. So, you know, people, um, the puppy getting confused because one time they're corrected for this or not corrected and so mm -hmm. they can get very confusing for them. You right. know, one of the things, one of the tools I like for people to have on hand is a playpen because um, maybe it's a seven or eight week old puppy that you have. There's no way for them to necessarily keep their bladder or hold their bladder while they're mm -hmm. in the crate. So having a playpen allows them to not mess in the crate. So usually the way I use the playpen is I attach it to a crate, for instance, and they can leave the crate and go out and urinate or defecate outside in the playpen area um, so that they're not messing up your crate training. You know, and then of course you can always shut the door on the crate. And you're going to leave them maybe for a half an hour or an hour. Um, what's the average time France time span typically that you can leave a, a puppy in the crate? I would say probably no more than an hour. Right. Definitely if it's a you know eight week old puppy. You just don't want to set yourself up for failure because once they are used to and comfortable right. eliminating in the crate, it's really hard to undo that because it's been okay in the past and so it's better off for them not to have accidents and take to take them out. Yeah, and I, I was always taught, I don't know if Trisha, if you, were, if you guys use the little thing where, you know, two hours, like every hour per month of life, basically yes. kind of a thing mm -hmm. is like kind of a, just a general rule. So mm -hmm. if they're two months old, it's two hours. They typically, now at night, I, what I'll see is they can hold it longer when they're sleeping yes. in their mm -hmm. sleeping hours. But during their daytime hours, you know, a lot of people work, you know, you're going to be gone for four hours, but yet you have a, a two month old puppy. So to keep them from failing, we'll use play pens and things like that so that they're not um, soiling in the crate. So something wow. um, nice about the crates we carry here is that they all do come with a divider. Nice. So um, you can shrink, the, you crate can shrink the crate size down so that they don't go to one corner and potty. Um, and then as the puppy grows, it can grow with you. So you buy a crate for the size the dog will be when it's grown mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy multiple crates. Oh, that's a huge mm -hmm. advantage. Yeah, because, and I think a lot of people feel bad when they put their pet in a, a smaller space, but it is so important in terms yes. of training. It's mm -hmm. really gonna lead you to success. If you give that pet too much space, it's just like your house. You know, you think, okay, I can leave them in the kitchen. You know, but they just go right over there, urinate, and they're quiet. They just sneak away, mm -hmm. urinate, defecate over here, and then they come back to their play area. Um, and um, and so I think, you know, definitely using confinement, um, using the crate, using the playpen are all helpful tools. Um, when they come in, when the owners come in, you can help size them with the right crate absolutely. based on the breed of dog and everything. Yes, absolutely. All right, so that wraps up all the areas that we think would be advantageous to having at home prior to getting your puppy. Now, let's go check out that gift basket. Holy cannolis, look at this giveaway basket. We have got all the things that we talked about today when we were at the store. Allie, what else do we got? What have you got in your hands there? All-Star gift card. All right, so it's a $100 All-Star gift card that can be used at the clinic. Trisha, what about you guys? Uh, Pet People is donating $150 uh, to help you get started with your new puppy. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely amazing. We've got the toys that we talked about. We've got treats in here. We even have an odor eliminator candle because we all know those puppies aren't perfect. <laughs> and some poop bags. Um, what else we got over there on that side, Trisha? We got some doo-doo voodoo cleanup. We got some chews. And because everybody loves to take pictures of their puppies, <laughs> we got a picture frame. So to be entered in to win this giveaway basket, leave your pet's name in the comment section below, and we would love to see a picture as well. Don't forget to check out the rules. A winner will be chosen at random out of all the submissions, and the basket must be picked up at All Star Vet. That wraps up today's episode of Dr. King Says. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for pet people for having us and letting us come in. And keep those questions coming. 
and we'll see you next time on Dr. King Says.